Welcome y'all to DIY Food Plot Pro. Today we're talking about April food plot chores that we have to get done to be successful in our food plots, okay? I want you to take all of the bad experiences that you've had with food plots, think about them, think about how bad it sucked in the fall not having food plots to hunt over, all the problems that you've had, and get rid of them, okay? Put them in the past because this year is our year to have successful food plots. Subscribe, watch the channel. I'm going to teach you exactly how I've done this over the years to have successful food plots. The first thing that we are going to talk about is food plot equipment and maintenance. Get everything ready, okay? Not gonna beat a dead horse here. Grease, oil change, get everything ready. This ranger is completely ready to go. The sprayer is cleaned out and ready to go. The tips have been cleaned. The nozzles have been cleaned. The filter's been cleaned. Um, everything's ready. The planter, the tiller, the tractor, everything that I have is ready to go for this, for when the ground breaks, we are ready to rock out, okay, and get into the field. Um, sprayer calibration, that's a big one. If you haven't watched my video on sprayer calibration, I'm going to post a link and I'd like for you to watch that. Super simple, easy way. I've had a lot of folks ask about the numbers, a close-up of the numbers that I did. I didn't post that earlier. I will post that at the end of this video. So stay with it, watch that. Essentially, what this means, fill your sprayer up, okay? And time it, spray it out. See how long it takes, do all the math, and you're gonna know exactly how much this sprayer is putting on your boom. Um, and, and you're not gonna have, there's no guesswork, there's no dragging um, rods out to see how long things are to measure. None of that crap's needed, okay? I saw a video the other day, a guy posted and he said, uh, try to spray an acre with your tank. Well, heck, if we knew that, we wouldn't be doing sprayer calibration, okay? You're wasting money, you're wasting time. This is super simple, you can do on a rainy day, and then when the weather breaks, you're ready to rock out and you know exactly how much this thing is putting per acre. Okay, um, soil test and lime and fertilizers, the next thing. You see, I have got a jug of plot start here. I'm setting up a trial for a later video. I have got four spots that are one-tenth of an acre, okay? And I'm gonna put pelleted lime in one, I'm gonna put ag lime in another, I'm gonna put plot start in one, and I'm gonna put a liquid lime from a different company in the other. We are gonna do all four. We are going to, we checked yesterday, pulled all the soil samples and we haven't put anything down yet. And we are going to check it at one month, three month, six month intervals and see does this stuff, does the liquid lime legitimately bring our pH up? Or are we wasting money buying this stuff? I hope this works because if this works, I will never spread another bag of pelleted lime or ag lime in my life, Scout's honor on that, okay? This, I hope this works. I'm doing this 100% unbiased. I want a true research done. So many folks say, no, it doesn't work. So many folks say, yes, it absolutely works. By gosh, the only way I know to do it is put it in a research plot and let's see if it works. That's the only way I know. Let's get our answer so that we know for the future, are we wasting money? Or is this stuff gold in a two and a half gallon jug? We're going to find out. Okay, so be figuring your fertilizer for your plots that you're going to plant this spring or fall. I have a lot of videos on that, on how to figure fertilizer, how to do fertilizer math. I've got a ton of different videos displaying all a lot of the different food plots that you're going to plant and how much fertilizer will be needed. Go back and watch those if you need to. Food plot chemicals. Okay, this is where it gets hairy real quick, okay? These are, these are chemicals that a lot of you probably have never seen. Some of you have, I'm sure. But there's a bunch that have never, been, never seen these. This is not your standard uh, glyphosate, 2,4-D, and clethidium. That's, this is not them. I definitely use those, but this is not them. Well, this one actually is, it's cornerstone. But 
Um, the other ones are not in here. These are different chemicals. Let's go over them. Charger Max. This is something that I use when I'm spraying my corn plots in the spring. Framework 3.3. This is a grass residual. This is for dove fields. Um, I think also corn. You can use that with corn. I don't use it for corn. Elevore. This stuff is helps you burn down the hard to kill weeds in the spring before your corn uh, crops. And read the label because this is very, very, very important that you read these labels. Uh, there's plant back periods on a lot of these chemicals. Um, so you can't spray and plant the same day in a lot of these cases, okay? Caprino, this is a, when we're making our second pass over our corn, once our corn is this tall at lay-by, this is when we're gonna put Caprino down. Class Act, okay? This is a lo lot of you never seen this before. This is a water conditioner agent. It goes in with cornerstone. It helps it drive that herbicide in there much better, helps it stick, okay? I always use those together, always. Anthem Max, this is an expensive chemical right here, but that is a very darn good residual that I can use for corn or soybeans. That's what I like about Anthem Max the most. I just wish it came in one gallon jug, but it doesn't, it comes in two and a half gallon jug. But that stuff right there is a very good residual when you're going back into corn or soybeans are small and you're ready to spray to clean everything up to keep it clean for the remainder of the growing season anthem max is a very good choice read the label guys okay there's a lot of these chemicals are a lot stronger than the ones that we're used to uh, glyphosate um, 2,4-D and clethodim these are stouter stronger better in my opinion um, these will help you control those hard to control weeds and they're going to introduce you into residuals. Okay. A lot of you are just spraying contact herbicide. Nothing wrong with that. The problem is that's not going to do anything for stuff that's coming up. Okay. And a lot of you guys are working your ground. If you work your ground, you can guarantee that as soon as you get a rain, you're going to have a plush of new stuff coming. Okay, it's kind of a vicious cycle that you get into when you're working that ground. Residuals really help that because they sit right there on top and when that stuff tries to come through, they kill it dead as a hammer, okay? All right, so a little bit about chemicals. That's not all the chemicals I use. That is only some of them. That's all the ones that would fit on the Ranger. Check that out. Found that the other day while I was out spraying. Pretty good buck. Well, found the first shed of the year while spraying, and I hate to find it like this, though. Hate to find him like that. I wish he had another year or two on him, but uh, sucks that we found him like that. But uh, anyway, found him the other day and wanted to show you guys that. Um. Is it too late to frost seed clover? Whoo, tough one. That's a tough question. Glad you asked me though. Um, clover doesn't need frost, okay? Spoiler alert, it does not need a frost and a freeze. What that is doing, that frost and freeze is heaving, contracting, heaving, contracting, it's sucking that down into the soil. You don't have to have that to plant clover. A lot of them guys that planted a month or so ago or two months ago, their clover hasn't done anything yet. It's still sitting there. You're not behind the eight ball yet. I'm not a big fan of spring planted clover. I'm not a huge fan of clover period, but especially spring planted clover, but it's pretty cheap. And if, as long as you don't get discouraged, that's why I've never recommended it. I don't want you to have a failed food plot um, and then get discouraged and quit. That's the worst of the worst. So if you're not going to get discouraged, if you say, you know what, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, then I recommend going ahead and putting it down this spring. Okay. Put it down as quick as you can. Don't wait any longer. But if you can get that clover down right now 
and it rains all summer, and you ha then you're ahead of us. You're ahead of the game, so you're in real good shape. I've seen it happen a lot that we get dry summers and it kills it, and I just don't want that to discourage you guys and, and then not make you want to do it again. So if you if that's going to discourage you, if your plot doesn't make it, then hold off and wait till this fall. I'm going to have a video on that exactly. I've already got one up, but I'm going to show you planning it um, in the late late summer, early fall. So that's definitely a better alternative, 100% sure um, that you're going to get a stand. I like it a lot better in the fall, but the spring is viable, okay? And last but not least for our April chores, get out and find your inventory. Find, he's not gonna be inventory for next year. Um, he was gonna be, but he's not now. Um, find the sheds. Go find your deadheads. Go find those deer. Uh, it's a great time. Turkey hunting coming up real soon for us in the next two weeks. It's a great time. You're covering lots of ground. Keep your eyes open and find those sheds and know what you've got coming up for um, this next fall to hunt. So thanks guys for watching. Really appreciate you guys. And uh, thank you so much for all you guys that are subscribers. Really appreciate your support. And it really helps me keep going and posting a lot of these videos. And uh, I hope you come back real soon. Had a lot of you guys ask for a close up of the figures that I gave you for sprayer calibration. Here it is. 25 minutes to spray my 15 gallon tank out. One acre equals 43,560 square feet. I have three 20 inch nozzles, which gives me a five foot boom width. 43,560, which is one acre divided by five feet, which is my boom width, gives me 8,712 feet that I have to drive to spray one acre. So at four miles an hour, all I do is take four, I times it by 5,280, which is a mile. I get 21,120 feet per hour driven. I divide that by 60, which is 60 minutes, and I drive 352 feet per minute. 352 feet per minute times 25 minutes, the time that it took for me to empty that tank, equals 8,800 feet driven, okay? 8,800 times my, my boom width, five feet, equals 44,000 feet. Divided by 43,560 gives me 1.01 acres. But I had a lot of y'all ask for me to do a close-up of this, and so I wanted to go ahead and do that.